Hello, it is finally time to talk about the Death God. I am not 100% sure how to do this one because, as always, I don't want to sound overly negative, but we also want to be realistic here and keep it grounded. We are not delusional, and what I'm going to tell you already, before even rolling the intro, is that this entire index is super questionable and weird. Let's talk about why that is, and if you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing, as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support what I do, either over on Patreon or on Ko-Fi, or via joining us on Discord, or follow me on Twitter for updates. My name is Zplash, and this is Empire of War Games. Yeah, thankfully I'm in a good mood today, so while I'm going to be talking about this one, I'm going to sound maybe a little bit more upbeat than I usually do. So when we talk about the Death Guard, we have a lot to talk about. And I just want to say that I consider this index to be a failure on multiple levels. On the flavor level, on a casual level, on a competitive level, as well as on a design level. I don't want to step on anyone's toes with this one, but we want to keep it realistic here. As I said, we are not delusional, we just want to look at it as neutrally as we can and obviously i'm going to have my reservations death guard are one of my favorite armies and i'm going to be a little bit harsher with this one than i usually am but i'm going to try to give ideas of my own and maybe um yeah hear ideas from you in the comments below so the first thing we are going to talk about is the army rule the army rule is nurgle's gift which is basically within contagion range as you can see in the cool little graphic there any enemy models get minus one toughness, which is on paper really cool. It fits flavor wise, and it's a cool little rule that we had in 9th edition as well. They added it on top of everything else we had. But what it does now, it seems, is that GW had to make a choice. Are they going to give the Death Guard disgustingly resilient in some form or fashion, be it feel no pain or minus one damage or whatever? Or are they going to give us Nurgle's gift? They didn't want to do both because maybe the designer or the designers thought that that would have been too much. In my opinion, you as a designer at Games Workshop have a lot of granularity available to you, which means that you don't have to give them a feel no pain of 5 up. A 6 up feel no pain would have already been way better than giving them nothing. And the other problem I have with this one is that you have to compare it to other army abilities that are just way more efficient, way stronger, and just really not comparable to this one. Because if you compare this to Oath of Moment, these are not comparable on any sphere of existence. And if you look at it from a basic perspective to what we had in 9th edition, this one is weaker in that regard as well. Yes, your range is growing faster, I guess, but you're still only removing one from the toughness, while toughness has gone up almost across the board, except for baseline infantry. So even elite infantry has gone up in toughness. Look at custodians, look at, you know, Death Guard Terminators, I guess. Look at some of the Chaos Space Marine units and infantry. There's a lot of toughness 5 in there these days. And the minus 1 toughness is just not cutting it anymore. And if you just do the math of minus 1 toughness and you look at the baseline um, Death Guard weapons, you're quickly going to realize that, you know, the minus 1 toughness is not going to do a whole lot. Yes, I'm going to admit that most of your units that we've seen here with the data cards are making it way easier to spread your contagion range almost across the entire battlefield. But all in all, minus one toughness is not enough. And in my opinion, this should have at least been remedied with applying minus two toughness from the fourth or something battle round onward. This should have been done literally anything. Please, just six up, feel no pain, or minus two to toughness from battle round three or four going forward. Just make it better in any shape or form because this is one of the weakest army rules and while it makes sense flavor-wise and why it is easy to understand, um, I think that there is just punch missing here and that is something I really don't like. So yeah, next up we are talking about our detachment rule which I also consider to be weak. If you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase and your death guard unit from your army is within range of that objective marker, you get sticky objectives. Also, that objective marker is infected, and while it is under your control, that objective marker spreads a contagion range. This one is really cool, so you're basically infesting uh, that specific marker, and with 9 inches, you need to realize that at some point, the contagion range is going to be larger than the kind of contesting range of that specific objective, and that is the use case for this one. You're basically spreading your contagion across the battlefield at some point. What I really don't like about this one is that usually sticky objectives scale way better with fast armies. 
And we have an army here that is notoriously slow and furthermore most of their abilities that they have available to them want them to stay on an objective but meanwhile spread the sickness kind of wants you to go away and the synergy is just not there and it makes no sense at all. Furthermore, in my opinion, DW designers are undervaluing movement and movement capabilities to a degree that is almost criminal. Uh, movement is the key part of the game. Without movement, you're not getting on objectives. Without movement, you're not doing anything. You're being an easy target. You're being predictable. Movement is probably the top two stat of this game next to just your basic damage output. And Spread the Sickness is not doing anything to help them with that. How about a buff that says, you know, while you're within the contagion range and objectives help you with that, you get inexorable advance. You cannot be modified when it comes to your movement capabilities. At least let us move our four inches. Anything. Because at this point, if they're, if you're playing against Space Wolves in specific, or maybe Tyranids with their new barb launchers or whatever they are called, you are going to have a terrible time. These are countering your army almost entirely, and you're never going to do anything. Because your army is not only better in melee generally, but also the ranged weapons are rather short-ranged. So spread the sickness should have also had some kind of added thing to it. Sticky objectives and contagion range alone are not cutting it. Especially compared to the other detachment rules that we've gone over for the Space Wolves, for the Black Templars, for even other Chaos Space Marines with all their different marks, all the different options they have, the cool upgrades they can give their units, all of that is entirely devoid of it here in the Death Guard Index. And yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I'm personally just, I don't like the detachment rule and I don't like the army rule. Next up, we are going to be talking about stratagems. The first one is Ferric Blight. And this one is going to improve your armor penetration characteristic by one. And if your opposing unit is within contagion range, that armor penetration characteristic can be improved to two on a critical wound. So it is most likely not going to happen, maybe on one or two shots or instances, but most of the time you're buying this to improve your armor characterization, to get weapons, if you are talking about regular bolters, to get a, the same level of efficiency as regular intercessors have at all times without any investment for models, like for example the regular Death Guard Plague Marines, that are probably going to be more expensive than intercessors on top of that. So Ferric Blight is going to be useful, I'm not going to dispute that, armor penetration up, is something that you're not going to see a lot. But yeah, at the same time, our weapons have such low AP that maybe upping your armor penetration by one is going to at least force Terminators to make a worse save or make characters make a worse save. So, a Ferric Blight, I would consider not bad. And we have the stratagem Disgustingly Resilient, which says, until the end of the phase, each time an attack is allocated to a model in your unit, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack. <sighs> So while the stratagem is not bad, it costs 2 CP for an ability that should have been called to the army, to be completely honest. And it is adding insult to injury at this point. Uh, because paying 1 CP for this one, I would have said, okay, fine, there are probably some characters in the index that are going to allow you to apply stratagems for free. And, you know, even for 2 CP stratagems, that, are, that is going to be great. But generally speaking, I would like to apply the stratagem multiple times per game because, you know, we are going to find use cases for it. And for 2 CP, you're not going to do that. If your unit is not, if you don't desperately need that unit to survive, you're not going to dish out 2 CP. And when it comes to character models that make things free, like stratagems, they are far and few between still, even if they are available. So disgustingly resilient for 2 CP personally, not a good strategy. Then we have the ability Zanguis Flux for 1 CP. Your weapons get the sustain its 1 ability, and if the opposing unit is within... Uh, contagion range, you get the sustained hits 2 ability. Don't get me wrong, for hard hitting weapons, sustained hits can be great, but keep in mind that you're only triggering those sustained hits on 16.6% .6 chance um, of every shot, and it is not going to happen as much as you think it is. Um, all in all, I would consider this one to be very mediocre at best, and even if your opponent's unit is within contagion range and you're getting sustained hits 2, um, you're basically gambling at this point. Because while it is a decent damage upgrade, what you're actually kind of banking on here I think or what GW's thought process here was is that most of your weapons have lethal hits and then if you add sustained hits you can maybe you know get more shots that are auto wounding but man you know it's still 16% chance at the end of the day and it's personally not something I would bank on I would rather keep my um, CP or spend them on Ferric Blight 
Then we have Gifts of Decay. Your model regains D3 lost wounds if your model's unit is within contagion range um, or within range of an infested objective, you gain three lost wounds instead. So this is for one Death Guard model from your army. Gifts of Decay for one CP, healing three wounds. I'm not sure. Three wounds are barely enough to survive one shot from a halfway decent weapon. And I'm not sure if you would ever spend one CP for this kind of thing. Um, personally, I think... For when it comes to durability and adding durability to the Death Guard, I really think that this should have been a little bit more potent than just three wounds. Three wounds can deflect another shot or make your unit survive another shot or model in this case. But usually speaking, three wounds on a vehicle, for example, that is going to be targeted by weapons that deal D6 plus one damage on average, is not going to do anything. So yeah, Gifts of Decay, I would consider to be quite bad. Then we have Boil Blight. Until the end of the phase, each time a weapon is equipped by a Death Guard model from your army that targets an enemy unit, that weapon has the heavy and ignores cover abilities. Yeah, you're hitting a little bit better, you're ignoring cover, which is great, but all in all, it's also kind of eh, in my opinion. Um, it's going to be effective some of the time, and you're definitely going to find use cases for it, but it's kind of subpar still. And last but not least, we have the second stratagem that you're probably going to spend all your CP on next to Ferric Blight, which is called Cloud of Flies. One Death Guard unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more enemy units attacks. Until the end of the phase, that unit has the stealth ability. So yeah, you're getting minus one to being hit. This is going to be a significant damage debuff for your opponent, especially if they, they are playing an army that is already not hitting that well. Consider Tau, consider... Imperial Guard that are usually hitting on 4s, hitting on 5s is a huge debuff, and at that point Cloud of Flies is really, really good. So, yeah, that stratagem next to Ferric Blight I consider to be your Evergreens, and the rest is very kind of mediocre to actually bad. So the stratagems overall, not a fan, we just have two of them that are useful in my opinion, the rest is kind of trash. But surely the enhancements are going to save the day, right? We have the Living Plague first, Death Guard model only, at 3 to the range of the Bearer's Aura abilities, including Nurgle's Gift. Okay, I guess. This one is decent, so you can improve the aura from your model to 12 inches, and, you know, just increase things going forward. Is this worth an enhancement and comparable to some of the enhancements we've seen so far? In my opinion, no. This should have had something added on top of it, like most of the other enhancements we've seen, that just had one line of text to them, because... For most of the other indices that we've seen, look at my other videos, if you read an ability of this power level, it would have said something else in addition, if it was a Space Marine enhancement. In my opinion, what you could add here to make Living Plague way better is just a simple thing of you are adding 3 to the range of the Bearer's Aura abilities, which is nice, and any model that is within contagion range of this specific model gains minus 1 to its leadership. How cool would that be? Or Battleshock? Who cares? That would have been incredibly cool and wouldn't have been incredibly strong. It just would have been a nice little additional touch. Strictly speaking, Living Plague is a little bit boring and not that great in my opinion. Then we have Deadly Pathogen. Death Guard model only, add 1 to the strength and attacks characteristics of the bearer's melee attacks. And while the bearer is within range of an infected objective mark you control, you can add 2 to the strength and attacks characteristics. This is decent. We've seen better ones that are very similar because they also add usually another stat, like armor penetration or something. But I think when we're talking about the Death Guard, that are usually melee focused, you know, getting plus two to strength and attacks is definitely going to be a decent little damage booster. And especially considering that your contagion range is going to be almost everywhere on the battlefield, you're going to deal usually plus two strength and plus two attacks with that specific model. So I think this one is fine. I think this one is right in the middle, super average, five out of ten. Then we have the Droning. For Death Guard model only, while an enemy unit is within contagion range of the bearer, each time that unit fails a Battleshock test, roll 1d6. On a 2-5, to five, that unit suffers 1 mortal wound, and on a 6, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Again, very conservative. We've seen similar abilities all over the place that some units have permanently on their data cards, and those usually deal, you know, from 2 to 4, you're dealing d3 mortal wounds, and maybe on a 6, you're going to be dealing... Or 5 or 6, you're going to be dealing D3 plus 1 or D3 plus 3. And this is just the most conservative variant you could have ever picked. And it should have also had minus 1 to those Battleshock tests. Because otherwise, it is going to be very difficult to enforce, especially on units that are casually running around with leadership 5 or something, 
which is not that uncommon, like at all. So the droning, another one that, you know, the intention here was the correct one, applying mortal wounds is cool and all, but it's just missing a lot of punch and additional lines of rules and making things better. And it just doesn't do that. And thus it's also bad. And then last but not least, we have Shamble Rod, Death Guard Bottle only. Each time the bearer's unit is selected as the target of a unit's charge until the end of the phase subtract two from charge rolls made from that enemy unit. Again, an enhancement that on its own is going to do great, especially against your ranged units that you want to protect and support. But this line on its own is just not enough compared to all the other enhancements we've seen that would have had other stuff thrown in there that if they fail their charge or something, they also get mortal wounds or, you know, you get to shoot at them for free, you know, or any kind of stuff like that. So it would have been cool to have an additional line of text that reads, you know, you subtract two from the charge roll and that unit can use the overwatch stratagem once per turn for free. That would have been sick. And it would have been overpowered at all because you're still only hitting on sixes with your shitty weapons. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Chamber Rod, another rule, perfect example. Compared to all the other enhancements from other indices, you are instantly going to see this is not on the same level. So honestly speaking, we've already seen so many Death Guard um, data cards because they were part of the first um, kind of game that GW has shown from 10th edition. Um, competitive players have been showing most of the units here. So I really don't have a lot to talk about. We've already seen Martarian. We've talked about them in depth. But what else do we have here? We have, for example, Typhus, which is kind of interesting because Typhus has a 5-inch movement. But you're quickly going to notice that that 5-inch movement is not going to do him any good. His basic offensive profile is fine. He has the Destroyer Hive, where you subtract one from the hit roll of melee attacks that are incoming, which is good. He has a psychic ability that is going to deal mortal wounds and all that kind of stuff. But for someone who should, in my opinion, be chapter master level, he is a little bit boring. And he should have been on a similar level to Mephiston, who has a, another ability, an entire third ability, and has other cool stuff going on for him, like, for example, a melee weapon that is just flat out better than Typhus's. So, yeah, Typhus, while okay, you know, is quite mediocre. But at the same time, let's take a look at Poxwalkers, which are one of the unit types that he can lead. And Poxwalkers are movement 5, T4, a save of 7 up, 1 wound, 8 up leadership, and an OC of 1. For 1, Poxwalkers are not immune against leadership or battle shock. That makes sense. GW wanted to um, kind of go away from making units immune to battle shock or leadership. But considering that these guys are zombies, I think that their leadership is exceptionally bad. And the same I said about the Necrons as well. So I think while these units should be cheap and so on, um, I just don't see why these are particularly bad leadership. You need to still pick up yourself from getting, you know, ground down and being brought down from different weapons and so on. Don't get me wrong. But I think these units, these undead type units, quote unquote, should have a leadership of six up or something. Because while, yes, you can bring them down and they need to pick themselves back up, they are never going to get scared. And I think this is not properly shown with their leadership value or with any ability that they have available. Furthermore, their weapons are significantly weaker. While we are talking about two attacks at strength 3, AP, 0, damage 1, you are not getting any support from Typhus, you are not getting any additional support from any stratagems, and you are not getting any support from literally anything else. Your army rule, your detachment rule, nothing is going to help you because the only time you are going to get any benefit with these attacks is if you are fighting against basic space marines or T3 infantry. And even then, you still have AP 0, and thus your attacks are only going to go through, yeah, at best 50% of the time, at worst, not even that. So what else do we have here? We have Curse of the Walking Pox. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack that destroys an enemy model, excluding monster vehicle, you can return one destroyed Poxwalker to this unit. Okay, I guess you're getting a model back that costs five points, and Typhus could help you with that because his weapon is a lot more potent for that matter. That is the only thing that Typhus is going to do for you. I forgot about that part because it's quite honestly not worth mentioning because it reads, each time a model in this unit makes an attack that destroys an enemy model, you can return one destroyed Poxwalker. So yeah, Typhus is going to bring back a few of them, no doubt, but your only defensive profile is T4 with a feel no pain of five up. Yeah, there's just something missing here. And there's something missing across this entire index that is not really helpful. They should have gotten some kind of conditional damage buff. 
Um, they should have gotten some kind of conditional thing with Typhus that is more than just getting some Boxwalkers back. Oh, but we talk about some of the positives. Without knowing the points, it is difficult to evaluate these, but the character models that the Death Guard have access to are not that bad. So the Noxious Blightbringer, one of my favorite models out of the Index, at least visually speaking, has a decent ranged weapon with a plasma pistol, has a cursed plague bell that is kind of funny when you look at the stat line, lethal hits with damage 2, is actually cool. Um, but 0 AP is going to make it very difficult to get those 2 damage through. But what is cool are his abilities, Sickening Vitality. While this model is leading a unit, you can reroll advance and charge rolls made for that unit, which is always nice to have. As I said, Death Guard are leaning a little bit more towards being a melee-based army, but you still have some good shooting. But what makes this guy really worthwhile, in my opinion, is the Bell Tolls. While an enemy unit is within contagion range of this model, each time a battle shock or leadership test is taken for that enemy unit, subtract 2 from that test. And 2 is a significant downgrade. Especially if you are playing against Chaos Space Marines, you're always going to be happy to have this one with you. And keep in mind that this one applies to leadership or battle shock. This is another upgrade. So subtracting 2 from, say, from a 7 to a 9 is a massive downgrade. So yeah, the Noxious Blightbringer, actually cool. I hope he's cheap enough that you can bring him. And he's not an epic hero, so you could even consider bringing him multiple times if he's cheap enough. Really cool model, really cool ability. And while the offensive profile is nothing to write home about, both of their abilities are super solid. And honestly, the same applies to most of these characters. If you look at Teleman, the Teleman can give you 1 CP if you roll 2d6 in your command phase and annoy 7 up, you get it. So you're getting it 50% of the time. Malicious Calculation says that you get 1 to the hit roll, and his weapons are nothing to write home about, very similar to what we had previously. Um, and yeah, it applies to most characters, quite honestly. The Biologus Putrefire has cool grenades, I'm going to admit that. The Hyper Black Grenade is rather nice, but he's kind of lost his ability to kind of throw or shoot his really strong super grenade that is going to deal a ton of mortal wounds, and that is kind of weird a little bit. But, you know, you get lethal hits and on critical hits that trigger on a 5 instead of a 6, which means that the unit that has a Biologus Putrefier attached to them is going to be one of the units that is the only unit that you should apply Sanguis Flux onto, which is the stratagem that gives you sustained hits 1 or sustained hits 2, which is cool. And then we have Explosive Melodies, which is once per battle in your shooting phase, you can target this model with a grenade stratagem for 0 CP, don't quite understand why it's just once per battle. The grenade stratagem is not good enough to be limited to once per battle at all. You're just throwing a couple of additional mortal wounds at someone, if at all. So, yeah, the Biologus Putrefire, Foul Infusion is the reason you take the guy. His Hyper Black Grenade is, I guess, cool. But the fact that he's not buffing any other grenades around him and so on is kind of weird. But that was enough positivity for now. Let's take a look at the Lord of Contagion or, frankly, any kind of Terminator Lords we have available to us that are a similar stat line. We're talking about Toughness 6 with 6 wounds, which is which is really cool for a leader. But when we look at the weapon, this one is, I, I'd say, solid, but still a downgrade considering how much toughness went up for the targets of the plague weapon that he had previously. And consider that there are some Chaos leader choices, um, like the basic Lord and so on, that can half the damage that is incoming, but the Lord of Contagion cannot, which is very weird. But what he has is Vector of Disease, while this model is leading a unit, um, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, you can reroll the hit roll. This is very basic. This is exactly what you expect. Really nothing to write home about. And we have abundance of sickness in the fight phase. Each time this model loses a wound on a roll of uh, d6 on a 4-up, the closest enemy unit with an engagement range suffers one mortal wound. This one seems very uninspired. Abundance of sickness seems, yeah, just like nothing I would have wanted on a Lord of Contagion. Why is the Lord of Contagion not giving my unit a damn feel no pain type save? or making them hit harder, or making them, I don't know, something, anything, but not one mortal wound for each time a, this model loses a wound. Because our healing stratagem is ass. Healing three wounds and applying possibly um, one or two additional mortal wounds for that is not going to be helpful. I wouldn't cast that stratagem on the Lord of Contagion at all. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going on here. The Lord of Contagion used to be one of the kind of mainstays, always very hard hitting, cool little buffs that he had available to him. And his hard hittingness kind of went away. Don't get me wrong, 5 attacks with strength, 8 AP minus 2 damage, 3 is still going to be solid with lethal hits. But 
really, compared to most of the other characters, this is exactly what you expect. And the sweep seems to me, personally at least, very weak. At strength 5, AP 0, damage 1, there is certainly AP missing here. And yeah, it just seems very, very weak. And when it comes to the rest of the other units that are maybe very important for the Death Guard, we've already talked about them. The basic Plague Marines are very points dependent, but as I said, they don't synergize with the Detachment Rule or anything that is going on with the army. Then we have the Blight Lord Terminators, which I'm fairly confident in saying that they are going to be the worst Terminators out there after seeing all the other Chaos Indices and the Space Marine Indices for Loyalist Marines, because they are things don't synergize at all you have lethal hits on most of your weapons but your blistering fusillade allows you to reroll a wound roll of one which is obviously not going to happen when you hit your lethal hits instead i would have been hoping for something that says you know maybe you apply critical hits on a five up to really synergize with the lethal hits ability but you know that's just me. other than that death shroud are super slow and their weapon is not quite as hard hitting as it was before we're talking only about four attacks at strength eight ap minus two damage two kind of meh they're so such a cool unit really they're one of the coolest units they plague spur gauntlet compared to most of the other flamers we've seen even on basic infantry yes is super weak and um, it has the anti-infantry for up ability but honestly speaking strength 3 ap0 damage 1 is not going to do anything and especially for such an elite model it is probably going to cost 40 points upwards this is not the profile that we wanted to see it's then we have the units like the Hellbrute, which I said in a previous video was one of my favorite models for some reason. I really like it. And this one has a cool ability that says, Infused with the Blessings of Nurgle, each Chimnus model is selected to shoot or fight. After it has finished making its attacks, you know, you can just pick one of the units that you've shot. And that unit is always considered to be within Contagion range um, until the next turn. And this is going to be useful, especially from for units that are maybe standing on the backline objective for your opponent. And you can still apply their contagion uh, aura onto them also notice that possessed are missing from the index i don't know if that is a mistake or not but you know it is what it is mythetic blight haulers um are our anti-tank weapon platform as it stands but if you look at the weapons we have a multi-melter and so on and the missile launcher crack weapon is good but what makes it an anti-vehicle weapon is that you get plus one to the wound roll that still means that you're going to be hitting most vehicles on a four up and light vehicles on a 3-up, at which point I would say, okay, that's decent. At least half of your attacks are going to wound, and with d6 damage, you're on average at least going to do 3.5 damage per roll. The average is between 3 and 4. Um, still, the multi-melter with the melter 2 roll, you can add that plus 2 damage if you're within half range and so on. So the mythic blight haulers are not looking too bad at all, and as always, you can bring between 1 and 3 of them in a single unit, which makes potentially stratagems, any kinds of buffs and so on a lot more valuable so yeah honestly we should call it here i'm going to just give one more last disappointment that i wanted to mention about this index and it is that they are selling lord felthius separately and it's a really cool separate model and while in its essence it's a lot of contagion they missed the opportunity to make another named character that could be cool they could have its own rules, its own buffs, and add a lot to the index, a lot to the army. And they just decided against that for no reason, like at all. Um, I'm not sure why that is, because you could have still had the option to, I think most people wouldn't mind if you would just run it as a lot of contagion, even though the base is technically speaking smaller. So yeah, Lord Feltheus and his cohort should have been an entirely separate unit, similar to um, what, you know, Kalger ended up being. Because Kaiga has this Victrix guard in addition to the unit that he's leading, and Feltheus could have been exactly the same. And that would have been an incredibly cool unit to have in the index. That didn't happen. And yeah, just missed opportunities over missed opportunities in this index. Synergies that are missing, a flavor that is just gone away with. Because, in my opinion, the Death Guard are a durable army, and that is what makes them what they are. And they are secondary, plague spreading, and, you know, decaying their opponents that is kind of their second thing and i think both should be supported for casual play this is going to be a bad index because yes you're only playing for fun and fun is all fine and well but you're not having fun if you're losing every single game trust me um, unless you're some kind of masochist i guess but other than that you'd want to win from time to time even in your crusade campaign 
um, unless you want to play kind of the NPC faction, I guess. So yeah, the Death Guard, I'm going to tell you if the points are not in insanely surprising, where a Plague Marine costs 17 points and a Hellbrute costs 100 points or, or 90 points, there's no way to save this index, like at all. I think this is the worst index that is probably going to come out. We're going to get Xenos today. Ugh. I'm, I can't get up, but all in all, I think I'm fairly confident in saying that this is going to be the worst index out there. And it feels like a completely different designer has taken over this index. And yeah, it's just weird. It's really, really weird. If you have any opinions on any of these models, if I've missed anything, if you want to talk about anything in specific, please drop all of that down in the comments below. I hope that the Death Guard are going to get fixed relatively soon. GW has all the options. It is relatively easy to update an index. They are going to have a new app, which I hope is going to be good because Battlescribe sucks. And uh, yeah, all of that good stuff. I hope that the Death Guard are going to get upgraded. I'm not super angry or anything, but I feel like there's a lot of potential missing here. And I would really like to hear what the designer was thinking when they were writing the rules, because that is just something... Man, I wish we had more designers' commentary on most of the things um, similar to what League of Legends has or similar to what most other games have that are a live service and then that are bringing out different patch notes and changes and where you have designer commentary at all times. You have constant interviews, constantly them talking about things. And for some reason, GW is very, very scared to do that. Even at Warhammer Fest, the designers were not really available that much or at all, I think. Um, and yeah, it's just weird how hidden and secret everything is, man. I don't know. I would have liked to just have things be a little bit more modern and a little bit more interesting. But, you know, it is what it is. The Death Guard are going to suck for the first three to six months of 10th edition. And after that, they're going to get a huge buff. You're pr practically going to be able to play a completely new army. You're going to have to get used to all the new changes all over again. And I think once that happens, you're going to have an army that is in a decent spot. But it sucks that we have to go through all of this uh, first at the beginning of 10th edition, which is actually a time where you as a Death Guard player should be excited. You should be getting cool rules, such as everyone else, and be happy that you can play your army, a flavorful army if you're playing Crusade, a somewhat strong army if you're playing somewhat competitively to at least be able to compete. But you're not getting any of that. And that is just sad. <laughs>